there's energy thrown at it here in the middle of the glycolytic pathway. And I think then this next slide, it makes some sense. Here is on the y-axis energy changes. So this is the starting point at glucose, and we're seeing the delta G associated with each step of glycolysis. That's the first step of hexokinase. That's the phosphofructokinase step. Then we've got a bunch of glycolytic steps in the middle where there's very little energy change. <coughs> These, because there's very little energy change, by mass action you can push them either direction. It's not so much uphill if you go from there to here. It doesn't, you know, there's hardly any change in the energy landscape. So you get down here to pyruvate kinase. That's the last step to get to pyruvate. Another big energy drop there. Guess which ones are bypassed in gluconeogenesis? These three, where there's big drops in energy in glycolysis. Boom, boom, boom. Those are the ones that would be hard to reverse. And these are the ones where new enzymes have been thrown into the mix in gluconeogenesis. So instead of trying to do that, you have a couple bypass enzymes that throw in ATP, more ATP energy try and get you up to this level. These enzymes, does, you can share them in both pathways because there's no little, little or no energy change. But then up here, instead of trying to remake this ATP or remake that ATP, you bypass those. So those are where the blue arrows are, are the three places where gluconeogenesis has bypassed. And which one's more favorable, 